Uh, what the fuck, man? <laughs> Game just ended maybe 10 minutes ago, and there's a lot of different things you can say about this one. I mean, this was, this was different than some of the other ones, because we play games like this several times every season, and at the end of the day, you kind of have to be used to it, but this was, this was on a whole nother level, and it's tough to even talk about right now. I'm going to try, I'm going to try, see what I can say, try to parse some meaning out of all this. So, Seahawks and Cardinals end in a tie, 6-6. Six to six. Kind of a miserable football game. Now, if you're into defense, if you're into pass rush, if you're into good play in the secondary, if you're into good special teams play, or maybe even some bad special teams play, depending on the way you choose to look at things, maybe you got some good stuff out of this one, but um, there was a lot of incompetence out there all around. So, <clears throat> let's start with the positives, because I don't want to shortchange some aspects of this team that you could easily forget about after a game like this because, you know, I'm going to just say it. Arizona played better than us. They should have won this game. It took a incredible parlay for them to not win. They didn't lose, but the fact that they didn't win in regulation or overtime took an incredible amount of unlikely events to line up and just happen all at the right time. So... <clears throat> Defensively, wow. This was one of the best defensive games this team has ever played. This is as good as it's been in since the year we won the Super Bowl, I think. I mean, maybe you can find games that were as good, but if you look at the body of work of this defense over five quarters of football against a pretty good offense, they were, you cannot say enough about those guys. You can go to war with those guys. Bobby Wagner, K.J. Wright, we were missing KPL, we were thin at linebacker, Nico Thorpe actually had to play a little bit of linebacker because we were thin, and those guys, they were great. I mean, David Johnson is maybe the best or second best running back in football right now. He had a decent game, but he didn't have a huge game. He didn't dominate the game by any stretch. He, he had a lot of yards, but that's because he got a lot of touches, and... You have to be satisfied with the job we did against him, given the way this game went. Given game flow, our run defense played really well. Um, <coughs> Deshaun Shedd, yeah, he, he gave up a couple things. He missed a tackle or two, but given the task that was put in front of the guy, great stuff. Uh, Kelsey McCray filling in, coming in off the bench for Cam Chancellor. <clears throat> made the game-saving play, did some other good things out there. Um, Frank Clark, sack and a half. Cliff Averill, two and a half sacks. Could have easily had more. Was one of, was a dominant pass for pass rushing threat this whole game. I mean, Cliff Averill had probably the best game I think he's ever had as a Seahawk. Maybe Super Bowl forty eight, but other than that, Cliff Averill. I mean, wow. <clears throat> Making up for the fact that Michael Bennett trying the best he can is not 100% right now and can't have the huge impact on the game that he usually does. You know, Richard Sherman, he gave up some stuff. I'll, I'll give you that, Richard Sherman. But given the magnitude of the task we put in front of him, my God. I mean, before this game started, they put up a graphic on screen that said that Pro Football Focus had him ranked as the 41st best cornerback in the league this year, which... I mean, that's just um, insane, and if you came away from this game feeling like that has even an ounce of merit, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, Earl Thomas, given it his all, came coming so close to a few turnovers in this game that would have probably won the game. Um, just all around, this whole defense just came together and played well in a situation where not very many other defenses in this league would play well. I mean... They had everything going against them. They were on the field the whole game. They couldn't get they couldn't get anything out of their offense the whole game, and they found a way. The only thing on defense, and I'm going to get really pissed off about this, Jeremy Lane 
made was about to make me lose my mind tonight. Um, okay, he missed two tackles. He gave up some stuff in coverage. That's just football. I get that. It's a bad game. I'm mad about that. But you cannot be stupid out there. You came very close to giving Arizona a free field goal at the end of the first half that would have cost us the game. And you got bailed out. And then you commit another personal foul that moves the uh, Cardinals' first, uh, second half drive into field goal range. And you again got lucky that we held up on fourth and one. So that shit's going to piss me off. And Jeremy Lane, if they leave you in Arizona tonight and they don't let you on the flight back home, I'm not going to feel bad because with what I saw tonight, I mean, that's just stupid. And I, I can't be dealing with that right now. I mean... You think just because you just got your big contract, you can do whatever the fuck you want? That, that That's not how this works. I, I can't be having that. Not on a night like tonight where every mistake could have cost us this game. You would have been the main problem on defense had we lost this game. I mean, you still are, but you would have been the guy that you could have pointed at. As it stands... His mistakes didn't cost this team that much somehow. And whatever the defense gave up in overtime, because they gave up over 100 yards in overtime, they gave up some stuff in overtime. You can't even really put it on them because the offense gave them nothing. And by the end of this game, they just had nothing left. The fact that they gave us the little bit that they had left is kind of amazing. So defense, you'd like to see turnovers. We had a couple opportunities for turnovers and blew it. But what else can you say? You gave up six points in five quarters. And uh, some of the special team stuff. You know, Bobby Wagner jumps the line, Cam Chancellor style, blocks a field goal. Hey, that ended up winning us or saving this game for us. That ended up keeping a loss off of the standings for us, probably. <clears throat> um, he jumps the line again in overtime, and maybe he affected the play. I don't know. Um, Tanner McAvoy blocks a punt by running through a dude. He doesn't even run around the dude. He just runs through him. <sighs> those guys, I mean, we had no business winning this game. And those guys made improbable plays to find a way to make it conceivable of winning. <sighs> so now I have to get to the bad shit. And there was certainly plenty of that. Um... <laughs> Guys, this offense is broken, and after the Rams game, I was a little concerned for sure. I expressed some of that, but this was different. This was worse. This was orders of magnitude worse, and it's not going to look terrible because of what happened in overtime. We gained probably over 100 yards of offense in overtime, but you know, throw that in the garbage because who cares? I mean, that first, those first four quarters, this was not an NFL offense. This was something else this was there's a strike there's a player strike you're pulling people off the street to play football because the pros are all on strike and you're just you know you don't have a real team that, that's what this was and um i know russell wilson being injured and not being able to move is huge that's a big problem for this team because we were counting on him being able to move around in the pocket and make plays when the pass protection wouldn't hold up, and we probably knew that the pass protection was not going to hold up very well in this this season. That's just the way it was going to be. But um, I feel like we need to do something else, and I feel like we need to make some kind of big change. Um, Bradley Sowell played as bad as you can for three quarters. He got hurt. I think his season is over. If you saw his reaction when he was getting carted off, and frankly, George Fant came in. I'm not saying he played well, but it was not worse than Bradley Sowell. I've seen enough of that guy. I know he's probably out for the season anyway. doesn't matter. Give me George Fant or give me death. I, I'm, I'm ready for it. And if that doesn't work out, I, I guess the trade deadline's almost here. Whatever the hell you got to do to get Joe Thomas, I'm almost ready to do it. I know this team isn't going to do it, but... Just give me somebody who I can depend on to show up every Sunday and play well. Because <clears throat> freaking Bradley Sowell teased me last week by playing pretty well against the Falcons. And tonight, turnstile, man. 
Gary Gilliam, not much better. I know those are good pass rushers down in Arizona, but holy shit. And I know Russell Wilson only got sacked one time in this game, technically, one time by Chandler Jones, but... <sighs> that was because every time he was going to get sacked, our offensive linemen held somebody and got flagged, so all of our sacks turned into holding calls. Ridiculous. So, offensive line, mostly the offensive tackles, dumpster fire. The interior, Jermaine Fetty committed another stupid penalty, but... The interior could have been worse. I didn't hate them, but holy shit, these tackles. This is depressing, man. You could play a three-man offensive line and probably produce better than we did tonight. Uh, Kristen Michael, when he got the ball, I thought he did okay. I, I don't hate the game he had at all. I mean, there was not a lot going out on out there for him. We never had the ball long enough. 3.3 yards per carry. I got to be happy with that. Um... God, I mean, you know, there are some people on this offense that you can criticize a little bit, but mostly those two guys, the tackles, we just didn't have the ball long enough. So what can you even say? Doug Baldwin made a couple big plays at the end of the game, in overtime especially, and that was enough to get us over the top in terms of not losing at least. Jimmy Graham had a big drive in overtime, but... He dropped a pass early in the game, which I, I can't be dealing with right now from Jimmy, of all people. And he he gave up on a route that could have been the game-winning touchdown on the first drive of overtime. I don't know why he just stopped. But those guys, given how much we had the ball, they, they played pretty well. Doug Baldwin especially, he almost won this game. Jermaine Curse been kind of quiet this year. Comes up with what would have been the biggest play of this game if we had won it. Perfect throw, perfect catch down the sideline on third down in overtime. Just thing of beauty. Um, all in all, we just didn't have the ball long enough. It's hard to get on these guys too much. I'd like to see a little more out of Jimmy. I'd like to see a couple more catches on his targets, but... What, this is weird, guys. And Of course, I have no right to complain about anything tying this game because... <clears throat> they played better than us. Like I said, they played better than us. They should have won. They didn't. Of course, we get a chip shot field goal and bink it. And it wasn't a bad snap. It wasn't a bad hold. It wasn't nothing. It was just he he pulled it. He he was the golfer with a slice. He just completely missed it. And the moment he got, it went off his foot, he knew he, he fucked up. And I'm not going to get mad at Hauska. He's been too good for us for too long for me to get critical on the guy. But that hurts because... Yeah, we don't deserve to win, but we could have stolen one, a big one. And now we got to take the tie. And I'll, I'll say this, I'm happy with the tie, with the way we played and the what it means long-term for this season in all likelihood. I can live with the tie. <clears throat> our chance of winning the division went up. Our chance of getting a first-round bye probably went up a little bit compared to, you know, a neutral result. I think this probably helps us a little bit, but... You know, with five minutes left in this game, I was thinking, please, just give me a tie. I want a tie. Just, I will take a freaking tie. And then you're just sick about it because you bink a 25-yard field goal that would have won it. Uh, but, wow, I mean, this was exhausting. Watching this game was exhausting. It's It's kind of hilarious that we almost won. It's hilarious that we didn't lose. It's... This video has gone on way too long, but I don't get it, man. I mean, this offense, something has to change. We need some accountability because tonight, this offense isn't winning anything. The offense that showed up in overtime, sure, but why the hell did it take three hours and 15 minutes for that to come out? It, it It's just, I understand that that's how football goes sometimes. A lot of teams take a while to get started in a game, but this was... <sighs> on to New Orleans, on to New Orleans. So, defense A, offense F+. Plus. I'll give you the plus because of the overtime. L not winning hurts, but it feels even better to not lose because, like I said, this was a loss, and somehow... I mean, we didn't do anything. We didn't do anything to force 
um, Cazzano or Chandler Cazzano or whatever his name is to miss that second field goal. He just missed. We didn't do anything to keep David John. Well, okay. Defense, holy hell, you kept David Johnson out of the end zone twice. If he gets in there, of course, none of this matters. Somehow, some way, you kept him out. That was um, biblical. But that missed field goal is just, please miss. <laughs> All right, guys, this has uh, been a confusing long video. I've tried to sum everything up, but um, something's got to change on the offense, and I don't think we can just wait anymore. I, I... After the Rams game, I was concerned, but I wasn't sure. After today, I don't think this team's success is sustainable with this offensive line. We need better tackle play, and I don't know if the answer is George Fant. I don't know if the answer is trading for Joe Thomas. I don't know where the answer is, but this is not good enough. All right, guys. See you next week.